All right, this is the Tiny SA Ultra, and it comes with a 800 megahertz uh, maximum frequency until you enable the Ultra mode. The Ultra mode can be found in the uh, configuration menu. Okay, configuration, go to more, and then there's a thing here called Enable Ultra. And when you click, click on Enable Ultra, it will ask you for a passcode. Um, the passcode is on the wiki page of uh, the Tiny SA, and the passcode is 4321. It's public domain, so uh, it's just there. I don't know why they're making you type in 4321 right now. Maybe in the future you'll need to email them and pay them money to get you know, certain features added. Uh, I'm assuming that might be the case. Anyway, I've enabled ultra mode. When I enabled ultra mode, it immediately went to a three gigahertz uh, full span. Now, this spectrum analyzer only goes to 1.8 uh, gigahertz full span. So um, I've put in a, a one gigahertz tone. And so here I have a one gigahertz tone and you see here I have a one gigahertz tone. Now there's a couple interesting things that's going on. One is that you see some strange things out here once in a while. So let's wait for a second. And there they come. So there's a bunch of little things that come out there. Now those are coming out of the, uh, the ultra, okay? So how do they get from here to here? Uh, well, let me show you that. Uh, I'm using a splitter. So the one gigahertz is coming into a splitter. I think the splitter has something like a 20 dB separation between these two ports. And then in addition to that, I have, I have 6 dB and 6 dB pads on the output of those. So I should have a total of about 32 dB of uh, separation between the two channels. But uh, the way that the Tiny SA gets the frequencies up higher than 800 megahertz is to use harmonics and it injects signals to mix products down. So you have a three gigahertz product, you'll mix it with something and you'll mix it down into the 800 range and then you can use the spectrum analyzer as is. So I've done a bunch of videos on external mixers and that's the way it works and I'm assuming there's something similar to that is working here. So the idea that you're injecting signals though into the front end of the tiny SA, that some of that escapes the uh, escapes that connector and it makes it through into this thing. So if you're going to use this, be aware that the tiny SA is going to inject signals into the thing you're measuring. So, um, yeah, that's uh, something to be aware of. So anyway, uh, so we have one gigahertz, one gigahertz. Let's uh, let's zoom in on them. Uh, let's see here. Let's uh, do a frequency center of one gigahertz. Uh, it's sweeping very very slow too. Um, we'll do a span, uh, oops, span of one megahertz. Okay, let's see how fast that is. That's not too bad. Okay, so there we go. We'll go over here. We'll do a frequency of one gigahertz and a span of one megahertz. All right, so we have apples and apples. And there is some FM on there. You can see the FM. Uh, so let me bring up the... So we're seeing FM here. Um, let's go ahead and change the um, width of the FM. Currently it's at one kilohertz, so let me set it to, uh, to 10 kilohertz. And uh, I will set the... There we go. We'll go back to one kilohertz here. 10 there. Yeah, there we go. That's better. And okay. So what I've done is I've set the uh, FM audio to one kilohertz and the uh, deviation to 10 kilohertz. So it's nice and wide. Um, and so uh, we can't really see it down here yet. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this. I have it at uh, one megahertz. Let's do the span of 100 kilohertz. And there we go, we're getting a nice FM. Let's hit the span here of 100 kilohertz. And there we go. So it is operating fine up at um, at least one gigahertz. Uh, 
that's as high as I can go with nice equipment. Um, I can go a bit higher um, with something something like this. I think this will go up to four gigahertz, something like that. Well, we can give it a try, but it won't be it won't give us any more information than what we're, what we're getting here. Um, so yeah, so we are. Let's let's do AM modulation. And we'll do 10 kilohertz of AM modulation. Yeah, there we go. And we can take a look at the two. Um, yeah, I'd say they're similar. We're not really getting these two nice peaks here very well. Um, kind of, they're kind of down in the noise there. But anyway, I, I, I say it's a pass. I say it's, it's I say it's doing okay. Um, the only downside I say would be that signal injection into your circuit. That may or may not be a problem, but it should be something that uh, you should be aware of. All right, I'm going to have my little uh, generator here. Uh, we'll set it at uh, one, uh, one gigahertz and uh, take a look at the two here. All right, so we're going to start out at one gigahertz. And you can see the one gigahertz here. Now this one has uh, a bunch of harmonics, one, two, three, and it's a square wave generator. So we're seeing the uh, second, third, fourth uh, harmonics. We don't have enough bandwidth here. This only goes up to 1.8 gigahertz. This one goes now to five gigahertz. I have it set to five gigahertz. Um, so let's move this up to, let's say 1.7 gigahertz. And we're just about falling off the edge of this one. And after this thing gets, there we go, <laughs> needs to go through one more. There's a little note down here too in your ultra mode. It says uh, linearity re reduced. There we go. So here's the 1.7 and here's its harmonic. All right, so now we can go higher. We can only see it on this one though. Let's go to uh, 2.7. Uh, it's gonna take a long time. Let's just go to, to uh, high as it'll go. I think it'll go to four, yeah. So I'm gonna set this to four gigahertz and we'll just have to wait for the uh, tiny A set update. Yeah, there we go, so four gigahertz. So yes, it is doing what it's supposed to do. Okay, well, that was a brief introduction to the tiny SA Ultra in ultra mode. Um, it does what it does as advertised. Um, it does have a little sign here that says reduce linearity and that's in the wiki uh, page. Um, and uh, be aware that it is outputting, uh, outputting some spurs. So um, let's go ahead and measure those directly. All right, so I've connected the output of the, uh, oh, the input to the input. I've, I've connected the input to the input, the input of the tiny SA to the input of the uh, HP. And uh, we can see that signals that are coming out. I kind of wanted to check the amplitude of those things. Uh, I'm going to do a max hold on them, and then we will go back and uh, measure the, uh, the power output here. Now, I'm only able to measure up to 1.8 gigahertz, and I'm sure that the spurs are going to go up to 4.8 gigahertz. Um, in order to mix 4.8 down, yeah, I would imagine 4.8 gigahertz. Anyway, somewhere around four gigahertz, it goes up. It goes up that far, but um, yeah. So let's go ahead and put a marker on one of these things, and we are getting minus nine point four dBm. So that's a lot of power in some situations. So um, if you're measuring something, be aware that you're going to be uh, injecting uh, injecting some. Uh, some power back into your circuit at about uh, minus 10 dBm.